I'm delighted to be joined in the downtown den by Sean Key. Sean's the managing director of Sutcliffe. And Sean, you've uh, visited us here before. It was some time ago now, uh, towards the start of the lockdown. And I'm delighted to say that Sutcliffe have uh, returned to work over the last couple of weeks. Yes, in the last two weeks, we've uh, opened the office up. Uh, initially for the staff who who wanted to come back, there was quite a number who just wanted to come back and also for the ones who were struggling from uh, working from home. It's interesting, Sean, isn't it, that you say staff wanted to come back? Because I think initially there was that sort of instinct of, oh, th this is great, it's a bit new, it's smashing working from home. But of course, what people quickly realise, I think, and it was within sort of six weeks that I started to get some of this feedback from some of my colleagues, is that they miss the office buzz, they miss the environment, oh, they miss yeah. the interaction with other people, don't they? They do. I think uh, we've, we've all kept in touch through Zoom and Teams and uh, our mobiles to a lesser extent. But I, I actually think people just miss people. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, I think you probably discussed this last time, but well, being stuck in your spare room working by yourself is nowhere near as enjoyable as coming around the office and having a crack with a couple of people. Now, that's changed. Uh, but as you said, the social interaction with people uh, is something that we all need. Mm. And you can, feel, you can feel it coming out in people's blood, can't you? You, know, you almost yeah. feel like they're actually wanting to do something or move forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as I say, I think the novelty value of working from home quickly worn off for most people. Uh, although, having said that, Sean... Um, as I say, you, you two weeks back into it, but not everybody's been able to return, have they? No, no. A anybody who's in the Shielded group or anybody who's absolutely adamant that they don't want to come back, we've accommodated uh, people's uh, views. Uh, we've typically gone for the ones uh, who want to come back. We're probably into phase two or three of people coming back very, very, very slowly and very, very, very carefully. We've planned the office out. It's, it's similar to as if you walk around the city centre, there's all sort of like little marks on the ground where you can't move. We've took t tables away. But typically the first people are the ones who really wanted to come back. And surprisingly, there were quite a few. There were quite a few who wanted to come back. And in the end, Sean, in the construction sector, you know, you've never really fully closed down, have you? There's always been stuff for you guys to do and to be cracking on with. Yeah, even in the very early days, there was always stuff to be done. So I think contractors, uh, Boris uh, Johnson's view uh, with contractors and construction, it was always a little bit loose. And I'd like to believe that was so that if the door could stay open for those contractors to carry on working. If they're working outside, then there's no reason why that's any less safe than working in the, in, in the garden. So uh, many of the contractors carried on working. And then personally, from our perspective, um, I was asked to go and look at a couple of dangerous uh, buildings, uh, went to look at a fire, the building that burnt down. And you can't hang around and say, oh, I'll look at that dangerous building in three months because it might have fallen down. So, so there was always a demand for us, even in the time when the lock time, lockdown period was on, to actually go out and see people and do a few jobs. Yeah, you can't be looking around uh, that sort of facility on Zoom either, can you, as good as it is? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> so let me just ask you then, not just in terms of Sutcliffe, but also in terms of the sector generally, how do you think construction is going to manage going forward? Is there going to be a, a, a cliff edge for you guys or are you thinking that there's going to be a, a relatively easy way back into business as usual? Yeah. The this is a strange sort of recession that we've gone into because in the past previous recessions, construction industry gets hit first quite mm -hmm. hard. This time we haven't. Um, as some of our uh, friends who are in the hospitality sector have been hit really hard, mm -hmm. construction hasn't. Uh, from what I'm gathering, I think our sector's probably do dropped maybe 15 to 25 percent as a whole uh, over the whole three month period. Uh, but there's, there'll be a pent up um, frustration within people to get straight back and do it. So I, I'm, people I'm talking to are still keen on going back to site and getting the stuff up and running. So if anybody who's doing any public sector work, uh, that's kept on going, albeit at a, a lesser rate. Some of the private sector work has dropped, but I, I'm feeling somewhere around the 80% mark is where it's at. But there's a lot of pent up frustration, so people will, there'll be a bounce. People will want to go back and complete their projects. And in terms of those larger projects that you're involved in, Sean, you've still 
uh, getting the sense that they're going to continue then? That seems to be what you're saying. Absolutely. So we're doing some stuff around the Knowledge Quarter, doing stuff at the Royal, down the Tobacco Warehouse. Those sites are all continuing. All of them are continuing, uh, but with reduced numbers on them. So I suspect progress um, on, on construction sites will be slightly slower because people are socially distancing uh, and they're making sure that the numbers are kept at a lower level. And the other side of uh, the business that we're involved in, housing, the housing side of our business uh, stayed uh, reasonably buoyant as well. Um, people are still buying houses, still selling houses. Uh, social landlords are still planning to build houses. There's, there's a demand for them. So that side of the business has kept fairly strong, even though when you're walking around the city centre over the last couple of weeks, it's looked very, very quiet. But in the background, there's all these little sites that are actually carrying on working. And let me ask you this, Sean, in terms of the, the social distancing measures, because the government have currently got this under review, and of course, the initial thoughts are with the hospitality sector, as you've mentioned, retail, which of course has gone back today, and we're saying, well, it's going to make a massive difference to those industries if it's reduced. But I'm guessing in your game as well, that's going to be a, a significant shift, isn't it? If it goes from two to one metre anytime soon, what is the sort of difference that makes to you? Yeah, I think as it turns out, I think our desks at the closest point were just under two metres. So we've actually missed every other desk now, as it turns out. And this, the space, but that's just what we didn't plan. It wasn't planned. So I think in terms of our... Uh, our, our offices it would enable us to bring more people back but I think it was I was on the press last week one of the uh, and I was talking about that we're going to keep some of the measures so I think some of the measures we're going to keep we're going to keep the flexible working so if somebody can work efficiently from home they've got a task to take away with them that's fine so in terms of anybody's doing um, the office side of the work it will make it easier and more practical and more real. I think some of the, the, the problems will be around staircases. If you've got one staircase and a typical staircase is a meter wide, it means somebody either goes up or somebody comes down. So I think social distancing, at, at, whether it's one meters or two meters, isn't gonna make a great deal of difference to us. I'd prefer it to be one meter, but I'd probably prefer everybody was safer. I think on, on construction sites, it's more of a problem because if you, if you need to lift something or move something, then the chances are you, you're closer closer than two meters uh, to a person yeah and that's where it could make a significant difference i suppose yeah. isn't it and the other thing is sean i mean i think that you know we've all got in mind good employees about the safety of the workforce and indeed you know for each other we've got to look after the wider yeah. community um but we're now going into week 12 of the lockdown we've been in for a longer period than i anticipated i thought okay. we'd be yeah. mid-May, maybe yeah. at the latest, you know, first week in June. And although I do accept the fact that we've got to be conscious of people's health, I'm starting to be equally concerned now about the implications, not just for the economy, but then the health issues that that starts to bring. So, you know, you mentioned the staff who were desperate to get back into work. There's that mental health side of this lockdown that's, I'm not sure, being fully appreciated by some people no i couldn't there's two great points there frank we did a poll before we came back and i was actually surprised that about two-thirds of the people were worried about coming back to the office genuinely worried and surprisingly it was tended to be the slightly younger end of the spectrum which when you look at it in my mind they're the ones who are probably the fittest and the healthy and the least at risk uh, but it was surprising um, and I think in terms of the economy, um, I, every week I send that little message to the staff uh, by email or talk to, to them as, as a group. And uh, on Friday, BBC announced that we're, the economy lost 20% last month. And I was talking to them, said, do you realise we haven't hit, hit 20% in a month? Uh, but I said, that means in five months we've got no economy. So we, we the, the the getting the balance of this this the balance of getting the economy going and looking after people's health is massively important. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm from today I'm looking after businesses and I'm thinking we should allow businesses to operate because at the end of the day, if people don't make money and don't make money and people don't actually build stuff and make stuff and bring stuff to the supermarkets, and then we do the economy breaks down and, and social life becomes uh, difficult. Yeah. 
well, we're going to end up with no taxes to pay for the services that we need for <laughs> yeah, the health right. and everything else if we're not careful. I mean, I, 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 you know, without getting into the politics of this thing, I, I think, you know, I'm looking at uh, statistics now which demonstrate, you know, the highest debt toll in Europe, indisputable, uh, yeah. and the biggest fall in economic growth. So we're getting the worst of all worlds. I wouldn't mind if we'd gone into lockdown for 12 weeks and our death rate was so low that you'd say, well, that was worth the pay. Uh, or equally, if we'd have taken a bit more of a laissez-faire attitude, but the economy would have been buoyant. But as I say, at the moment, we look as though we're falling between both stools. Uh, I couldn't agree more with you. And I think there's going to be a big inquisition here and everybody's holding it back, right? which is the right thing to do. We need to be in the clear. But there will be a big inquisition because, we've, as you say, we've had the heaviest death rate, uh, the longest lockdown, and uh, the biggest impact on our economies. Um, so we've, we've, we've lost three times. And, and a, a personal view, we must have done something wrong. You can't look at it and think, I'll go to football teams. We were relegated, but it wasn't our fault. We, we must have done plenty of things wrong. And I suppose now's not the time for the Inquisition, but there, there will be one. Um, but I, 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 <laughs> I would prefer uh, low death rates. We probably should have locked down a little bit earlier. And the impact on the economy. Uh, people will die from that, Frank. Yeah. There'll be there'll be yeah. deaths from that, which uh, which I think the death rates generally on uh, is is higher than it should have been. But the economy will impact uh, yeah. on people's mental health. Yeah, I was reading over the weekend, Sean, about um, there's lots of impact on the health service, of course, uh, yeah. but people over the last three months who've not been able to go uh, and get checks for for cancer. Uh, yeah. And some of these checks are simply um, to screen, uh, but it's suggesting that literally thousands of people may, because of that delay, end up having cancers that can't be treated simply because of that delay. So it's all, listen, there's, you know, there's no risk-free environment for us, is there? No, the, well, so the population, there's nothing that we're going to be able to do where you get 100% safe. As I said to one of my team a few weeks ago, I can put all these safety measures in place, guys, but ultimately you could come out one morning and get hit by a bus. You know, <laughs> so you can't guarantee everybody's safety 100% of the time. Yeah, I think the construction industry is quite good at analysing risk. So mm. it takes a risk every time we do anything. Um, I, I sometimes think the most riskiest place for me to be is at home because some of my DIY tasks are not the greatest. <laughs> but if you think about it, uh, if, you're, if you're at home, you could be on a step at it and trip off. Yeah. So everything we do in life, there's a risk. And it's about keeping it down to what would be uh, a sensible a sensible level. And I said the construction industry is quite good for, the, for doing that. Interestingly, when I was chatting to some of my staff over the previous weeks, I was, I was saying to them, and this is absolutely true, I said, it's less busy in town, but round by the office, than it is where I live. Mm. where I live there's lots yeah. of people walking up and down the road and it's amazing everybody's talking and looking after each other but in terms of uh, interaction the city centres have been quite quiet most people apart from a couple of um, a couple of idiots who have been carrying out carrying out have generally been uh, following the recommendations really really well and looking after each other yeah and that's what it's about isn't it it's about yeah. us all taking some personal responsibility and making sure that we do what we can to uh, implement what the government are advising. But listen, Sean, in terms of Sutcliffe's then, um, you've got through, uh, as you say, a very long lockdown. You're starting to slowly but surely get back into the work. So is it glass half full time for you guys? Uh, yeah, probably. It's actually, we've, we've, uh, we've, the first part of this, we've, We've been there, I think it's about 80 days or something. The first part of it, you didn't see much. Everybody's working remotely. And I think the effects of people working away from each other has just slowed us down a little bit. But I see a bounce in the construction sector, and I'm, I'm, I, I see a bounce. Um, I see there's people with pent up frustration to start their developments. And I think funding's still there. This isn't a financial crisis created by financials. So that money will be there. I think there's just been people holding back. So I, in our sector, um, I'm anticipating, um, I'm anticipating a, a bounce in the construction sector. Might take, might take three to six months uh, for it to start to take hold. But uh, I, I'm looking forward to be on on this. Maybe hopefully for Christmas week when we're actually out, 
uh, and saying to you, yeah, yeah, it's after October, November, uh, that time, we've seen a little bit of a boost uh, in the time. I think for the next month or two, it'll take a bit of time to build up, but it's a positive feel that I'm getting talking to most people in our sector. Yeah. And, and the other thing I wanted to ask you about, Sean, because I know it's an area of uh, work that you're interested in, is, is that skills agenda. And of course, what we are going to see undoubtedly when we come out of this is a spike in unemployment uh, and i know that you know your sector uh, is one of the key areas where you've been saying for a long time now this we just need more people who are skilled enough to work on our industry you'd hope that the government and the powers that be now are looking at being able to fast track people uh, you know better quality apprenticeships and perhaps using companies like yours to do the training and providing some funding for it yeah what what typically happens in these i've seen a couple of these is that when you go into recessions uh obviously everything shrinks and training is one of the ones that just falls by the wayside um and and then there's gaps what you find there's generational gaps where you have people of a certain age group that don't come through uh, i'd like to see some government funding uh, for training it'd be better that they're actually learning a life skill a proper skill that they can then take forward and different governments over the last my, my working career last 30 years have, have, have tried this and it does work interesting i was talking to my uh, daughter yesterday and i was saying to her so when i was 16 i went on a yts and i learned to weld and i said i absolutely loved it absolutely loved it and and it was a skill that sort of stood me in good stead in later life. So I think some sort of government-based schemes to get all these kids who, who, was, who will struggle to find work. Uh, what I, I think with these type of uh, difficult periods, it tends to be the younger, lower skilled people who have the greatest hit. Yeah. So I think if, if the government can come up with some sort of funding mechanisms to encourage SMEs and businesses like ourselves to take on a couple of these people, yeah. then we'd happily, happily do it. And we've done it in the past. We'll probably still take people on. Uh, but there is a cost to training people mm. um, and, and it, it shouldn't be fully born, be borne by the business. Um, eventually, we, the business sees the benefits of it. But some government funding, Frank, so if you can get some political pressure out there to, to do that, that would be really useful for us all. Yeah. Uh, and just finally, Sean, I know that uh, we spoke about this briefly last time. We were all looking forward to getting to, to Cannes for Mippin because we've done a lot of work <laughs> and we've put on a programme of, uh, of work together. And of course, Sutcliffe, are a big part of the Liverpool delegation. We're continuing to meet online. We've got a, an event in a couple of weeks' time that uh, if you've not had the invite already, you'll be getting it imminently. Good. Um, but we'd hope that uh, by March, um, we'd be back out there. And of course, you know, it's very important, isn't it, that we continue to make those connections, keep that pipeline and maintain a, a forward thinking approach to our businesses, because there's nothing worse than sitting there pausing and stagnating. That is what will kill a business. I couldn't agree more with you. People will flock towards quality at the moment. So if, if, if uh, we will come out, this is a blip. It's a painful blip, this is a blip, but people will come out at the other side of it and it's massively important to keep on pushing and moving forward. Interestingly, on Friday, we, we got an, a, project, a, a job inquiry from one of the MIPIM delegation, so it proves it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just proves it works. It wasn't, it was, you know, it's a nice size uh, scheme. I'll tell you what it was, wouldn't want to embarrass the guys who, but it shows it works. So it, in terms of Liverpool, we want Liverpool to be a forward, a, a city that's at the front so going to, to Mipham and the team that go around Mipham is incredibly strong. I actually think it's the strongest out of the, re out of the region. Surprisingly, considering how big London is, our delegation is better. It's stronger, which is surprising considering how strong it is. But in terms of us, back at Mipham, we'll be back there, uh, God willing, uh, next year. Uh, we will turn up at, at your events and, and have a little uh, see, what's, see what's being said. There's always good quality events. Um, but as I said, one of the positives is on Friday we got an inquiry from from the delegation, so it proves it works. It proves it works. Brilliant, Sean. It's great to see you back in work and on good form. Thank you. And uh, we'll catch up hopefully face to face in the not too distant future. <laughs> Absolutely. Cheers, Frank. <laughs> Cheers. Down, Thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye, mate.